um, Papa Rowe, the intent for the National Cathedral has always been simple and a clear cut. Somebody dreamt in his room he wants to be president, spoke to his God on his knee, and his God answered him. So if this morning he can scam his God and will not be able to deliver on his promise to God, who am I? And then, of course, at the end of the day, they make the whole thing a justification by saying God sleeps. But this morning, I'd want to remind the NPP that the goal that we serve as a people, the 71.3% that's Laura to refer to are Christians, our God never sleeps, no slumber. Now, this is the big deal. If it's supposed to be a private venture, at what point did it become a public policy? At what point did government start financing it? Going by what Laura too said, government was supposed to give a land and a seed fund. What government gave for the National Cathedral was not a land. He gave a developed environment. There were bungalows for judges. There were some embassies there. So government didn't give a land. Government gave a developed area that they demolished, plunged the state into another depth. Now, this is where the big deal is for me. When Bishop Dakewood Mills wrote that letter to disassociate himself from the Board of Trustees, one thing stands out for me. He said, they spent a huge amount of money to go and raise funds. And what they spent was more than the funds they raised. When they came back to the country, they raised 794000 they used 790,000 for a symposia drinking tea and bread at Kempinski. We were left with 4,000 Ghana cities. So what is it that 4,000? It was 4, a fundraiser. What is that 4,000? A fundraiser for what, Papa? For the National Cathedral. For the National Cathedral. Yes. So you raise the funds, you come back and spend it on tea and biscuits, and we are left with 4,000 Ghana cities. What is that supposed to do at the site? That notwithstanding, we went through it. We, you were called to Parliament to give us an answer. Why you plunge public funds into that? And I would want to make this simple for all of us. If we are going into a public policy, there are some key things every government who has empathy for the people should look at. Like what? The first thing is, what problem is that edifice supposed to solve as a people? The second issue is the timeliness. Is it urgent we have that as a people? Is it time bound that we don't get it, the people are going to die? And the third, that is the topmost on that priority of the things to look out, to, uh, out for when you are getting a public policy done is the resources. Do you have the human resource and the financial resource to implement that policy? Let us do all that fact check. It wasn't done. And then now this is where it lies. President Ekufuado wants to build a cathedral just because in the Bible, King Solomon built a cathedral. But one thing we are <coughs> failing to adhere to is that King Solomon never set out to ask for money from God for a cathedral. He asked for wisdom. And the wisdom we are failing to get as a people from President Ekufado and his praise singing followers is that as we speak now, in an island community at a farm plains north, school children are in the house. They cannot go to school because there are no learning materials. There are no teachers. As we speak now, Bosanko Old Town, in the Hafu region, a pregnant woman who was in labor died with the child because there is no health facility and the roads were deplorable that they could not get to the neighboring town for them to rescue the pregnant woman and the unborn child. And at this critical point, the wisdom is that we well, do Louisa, not... I don't know whether you've got, got, gotten onto the platform. That's uh, the main portal for the National Cathedral Secretariat. And the present vision for having this project in place, which... <laughs> ultimately will be a touristic um, purpose is well outlined. And I'll just um, t t take from the second paragraph. It says, as a deeply religious nation, the cathedral provides a historic opportunity to put God at the center of our nation's affairs and serves as a symbol of our eternal and continuing gratitude to him. So oh, if you want to serve all spheres of the religious demography that we have, the Muslims have a, a, na a, a national mosque just behind us or ahead of us, and then a cathedral. Somebody will say that it's not untoward. Papa, we made a statement. He wants to serve all the religious interests of the people. Is he building a national shrine? It's, it's a worship. They are traditionalists. 
So if he wants to serve everybody's interest, is he building a national shrine? And the other part of your opening statement, the, the message that you just read, he wants to put God at the center. When President Ekufuado was not president, God was not at the center in Ghana. One thing we should know, God as the supreme being he is, is against the wicked who oppress people who are poor for his personal gains. Exploit poor people just for the glorification of a human being. The Bible says he is a God who does not share his glory with a human being. So if President Ekufuado sought to share glory, must it be from the taxpayers' money? This morning, I have elaborated the issues with putting forth a public policy. One question I would want to ask, what is the justification for the National Cathedral? And what problem did it seek to solve in the daily lives of the ordinary Ghanaian? What's the position from you? President, what should we do with this? President George Rabani Mahama says that with the operation, recover all the loot policy. Operation what? Recover, recover all, the, all loot. the loot policy. We are going to do a forensic audit of the money that have been spent on the project so far. And trust you me, whoever have taken any amount of money for no work done would be forced to refund the monies and whatever punishment due them will be given them. When we are done recovering, we would have the stakeholders engagement to decide per the tenet I gave out for how a public policy is supposed to be done. We are going to look out for what is best in the interest of Ghana to get that site moving and something proper that would actually serve the interest of the nation so no more and not that of an individual. There. I'm not saying no more. But what it is is that proper thinking did not go into that policy. So we are going to run it through the policy process and make sure that what will be there after that forensic audit will be something Ghanaians can be proud of. And Papa Ru, I would want to say this. If we want to find unscrupulous individuals in this nation, unscrupulous individuals are the people who spent $58 million on a dugout, left the place unguarded, left iron rust to rust yes. on site, and left that place open to breed mosquitoes and reptiles in this nation. Unscrupulous individuals are the people who spend millions of dollars to a family and friends for the repairs of an ambulance that we are even using the National Ambulance Service to repair. So this money, Papa Ro, the vision of the NDC is simple. Under President John Dramani Mahama, trust you me, every single persua that has gone into that project will be accounted for.